After Effects artists love new tools, don't we? And Twitter is a buzz about this new one, Skew. Skew! Skew. What is Skew? And does it live up to the hype? Let's find out. Okay, what is Skew? Skew is a tool for After Effects that solves a problem. That problem is that inside of After Effects, sometimes the tools that we use to manipulate the timing of layers are a little clunky and a little tedious. So here's a very simple animation. We have the word skew popping into frame and right now all four letters pop in at the same time. If we go into the pre-comp for the letters, we can see that the keyframes all line up. Very boring. So what you're probably used to doing is grabbing the layers and offsetting them a little bit and kind of wiggling them back and forth to try and, you know, find the timing that, that works really well. Oh, that's kind of cool. And this works great. And especially when there's only four layers, it's not that much of a pain to do, but there's gotta be a better way, right? Now with four layers, honestly, this doesn't take that much time. And if I decided, you know what? I actually want them to be a little bit more offset. I could come in here, I could use a hotkey, maybe option page down to nudge the layer one frame at a time. And I could space them out a little bit more. See if I like that. Yeah, that's great. Or actually I wanna go back to what, what it was before. You can see that doing little moves like this while individually don't take that much time, when you're doing this over and over and over and over again on a big project, it really does eat up a lot of your production schedule. So let's look at how SKU can make this easier. SKU is an After Effects extension, meaning it lives in the Window Extensions menu. So I'm gonna open up SKU. And if you're unfamiliar with the difference between a plugin, a script, and an extension, here's an easy way to think about it. Plugins typically affect the individual pixels on layers. They actually change the way the imagery that's on that layer looks. It's manipulating the pixels. Whereas a script is something that is essentially just running code on After Effects to automate tedious tasks. And an extension is just a script with a fancier interface. The interface for SKU probably looks familiar. It looks a lot like the existing timeline interface, but it's basically the timeline on steroids. The basic thing SKU does is offset layers in time. So if I come up here, I select all four layers and I grab either the top or bottom of the selection. I'm gonna start with the top and I move my mouse left and right. That's why it's called skew. It's clever, right? But what it's doing is it's offsetting the layers in time with an equal number of frames, and it's doing it really, really quickly. The second I let go with my mouse, the timeline updates. And if I change my mind, I come back up here and I make it a little less or a little bit more. And of course I can be RAM previewing as I'm doing this. This already is pretty cool, but we're just scratching the surface of what this tool does. So let's preview this animation. Cool, all right, the timing's not bad, but we have a problem. The problem is the S is supposed to come in first. Oh no, well, it's pretty easy to fix that. I'm gonna select all four layers and you'll notice this little menu pop up here. And this is one of the things I really like about this tool is that the UX has been really, really thought out. Honestly, I didn't even really need to read the instruction manual for it because it's built in a really, really smart way. The developer did an incredible job. And so in this tool, there's a little option over here, flip horizontally, which by the way, has a hotkey like most things in SKU and they're helpfully displayed for you every time you hover over something. So I can click on this and it will flip the timing just like that. I can hit F as many times as I want to. It's actually kind of fun to do. But now you can see that the S is the first layer to appear. If I come back down here and preview it, good to go. And if I don't like that timing, I can grab the layers again, and this time I could grab the bottom and just stretch them out more or less. Really, really, really simple, really fast. Now, if that's the only thing you ever used SKU for was to offset layers equidistantly like that, Great, this is still gonna save you a ton of time, especially if you have more complicated animations spread out over a bigger project. But of course, this tool can do a lot more. So let's dig into a more complex example. But before we do that, I do wanna tell you about a free 10-day class that we have at School of Motion called The Path to MoGraph. If you are thinking of making a profession out of motion design, check it out. It's totally free. You'll get to see a motion design project done from start to finish every single step of it. You'll get a tour of several top studios in the industry. And if you want to go to the next level, check out our interactive courses at schoolmotion.com slash courses. Link in the description. All right, so this is a much more complicated example. We have way more layers. We've got this repeating pattern and we'd like it to animate on in a more interesting way. So let's hop into this pre-comp and click on SKU to load the current comp. Now, right off the bat, I wanna show you something really cool about this tool. If I 
expand my timeline so I have a little bit more room down here. You'll notice that now I can't actually see all of the layers at once. I have to use my mouse scroll wheel. I actually don't have a scroll wheel. It's, you know, it's the magic one. But I have to use my scroll wheel to get up and down to be able to see these layers. Well, one of the things that you can do in SKU, which frankly I wish you could do in the native After Effects timeline, is scale the vertical size of these layers by clicking this button. And so now I can see all 25 layers. They've gotten a little bit smaller. And if you have a smaller number of layers, they can actually get bigger and fill the frame, which is really handy. So I can do the exact same thing I did in the previous example. I can grab all of these. And let's say I want layer one to appear first. So I can grab from the bottom and pull all of the layers out like this. And you see how quickly it works. Now I can come down here and preview this. And already it's looking more interesting. And that took seconds. But now because there's so many layers, we can do some more advanced things. Let me pull out the timing of this a little bit further. And now I want you to look at this little pop-up that appears after you've skewed some layers. It looks very much like an animation curve editor, kind of reminds me of the other extension that I love using, Flow. And what this is gonna do is actually apply easing curves to the timing between the layers. So I'll show you what I mean. If I click on this icon, this is essentially like an easy ease. You can see what it did to the timing. It created a little bit of a wavy pattern. So what's happening now is that the timing between layers is closer together at the beginning, farther apart in the middle. It's a subtle effect, but it, it's actually pretty interesting. And to be honest, it would be, it would be a pain in the ass to do if you had to do this manually, especially if after the fact you wanted to adjust it and say, oh, I like the way that feels, but I'd like it to take 10 more frames. It's really easy to do with skew. It'd be hard without it. And of course I could select all of these. I could flip them like this if I wanted uh, the pattern to start from the bottom and move up. So that's great, but what else can we do? Well, let's select all of these and I wanna reset them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the aligning tools that pop up down here. There's also hotkeys for almost everything in SKU, which is really cool because if you're using it a lot, you're gonna wanna learn the hotkeys. And A is for aligning. So with a bunch of layers selected, if I hit A, I've got this little context menu. I can align them by the center, basically the center time-wise of where all of the layers land on the timeline. But typically I'm either using left align or aligning to current time. So I'm on frame zero, I can align to current time, and now I've moved them all back. So let's say that I want just a basic timing offset, but I don't want them to start from the top or the bottom, but kind of somewhere in the middle. Well, that's really easy too. I can grab the bottom and start skewing, but then I can move my mouse up. And you'll notice that as I move it up, it's changing where the skew is happening from. It's almost creating like an arrow like this, right? So if I want it to happen basically from the middle and it'll automatically snap to the middle, I can let go. And then I can still use those uh, timing adjustments down here to get a really interesting timing pattern. You can get some really interesting results playing around with this and it's really easy to experiment because of how fast the tool works. So I'm gonna select all of these. I'm gonna align them to the left. And another very common thing that you may wanna do in a situation like this is randomize the timing of when these layers appear. And with 25 layers, that can be really tedious, especially if you wanna adjust the timing afterwards. So there's a great randomize mode in SKU. If I just click on this button and then I move my mouse to the left or right, it will randomly move the layers by the amount that I move my mouse. And if I like the amount of the randomness, but I kind of want a different pattern. I can use the mouse scroll wheel, or if you have an Apple mouse, just kind of do this with your finger, and it will change the random seed that SKU is using. And so you can really quickly kind of see different looks and, and just kind of experiment to find something you like. So I want something about like this. So I'm gonna click, and now that's locked in. Now, here's another thing I wanna point out. In After Effects, on the timeline, if layers start before frame zero, you can't actually see them. I can manipulate them, I can pull things back, and so what I would typically do in this situation is select all and grab these and move them, right? Which, which is cool and it does work, but it's a little bit easier in SKU because I can actually see where those layers start even if it is before frame zero. So I can grab all of these and then I can just grab them and bring it to frame zero and it will snap. So that now my animation starts on frame zero and I've got this nice random pattern. 
Now you may have noticed that my skew timeline is showing me frame numbers, whereas my After Effects timeline is showing me seconds. This is a really easy thing to toggle in skew. Just come up here, click on this button, which opens the main menu. And you've got a whole bunch of options here, uh, which are pretty self-explanatory, but you can switch between seconds and frames. Another thing I like to do with SKU is lock the comp that I'm working on, but go into a different comp to see the result. And so that works exactly like this icon in your comp viewer in After Effects. You can just click on this lock icon. So now if I go back to the main comp, I can still come up here and work in SKU, but I can view the result in my master comp. Now, I think the show-stopping feature that got everybody excited on social media was the one I'm about to show you. If you want more fine-grained control over the layers, of course you can click an individual layer, move it around, do whatever you want to it. However, there's kind of a more fun, natural way of doing it. The skew timeline does react to swipes across your mouse, so I can kind of swipe the timeline down to get more visibility to the left. Then I'm gonna click on this button. This is the Liquify tool, and it works just like the Liquify tool in Photoshop. You can click and kind of nudge layers around, and you can push and pull them like this. So if there's certain layers that you feel like, ah, they're coming in too late, they're, they're coming in too fast, you can just click and drag and manipulate them. So in this fun way, I can basically paint the timing that I like, and then I can switch back to the mouse tool, grab my layers, Make sure they start at frame zero and preview my animation. There's one more feature that I want to show you. And to be honest, I think this is actually the most powerful feature of SKU and probably the thing I would be using the most on client projects. So looking at this animation, I'm liking the random timing of it. It feels cool. What I don't like is how flat everything looks. Every skew looks exactly the same. It's a very flat color palette and it'd be nice to add some variation to it. So let's go back into the pre-comp here. Now what I'm thinking would be cool is what if every other instance of skew was a slightly different color? And one way I could do that is just by adjusting the opacity of every other layer. So how do I select every other layer? Well, the old fashioned way is you click the first one and you hold command and you just kind of carefully go layer by layer like this. There's other scripts you can get to do it, but if you own SKU, it's built right in and it's really, really smart the way they've implemented this. Select all your layers, control click, and you get this whole other menu of tools. And one of them here is select every. If I click on this, by default, it's gonna select every second layer. That's what this index means. So if I then hit apply changes, I can now click and drag those so I can adjust the timing of every other layer separately if I want to. But what I actually wanna do is have this selection in skew end up down here in my main After Effects timeline. And there's a handy little button right here that pushes that selection to After Effects. So now that I've done that, I can come down here and I can manipulate those layers any way I want. I could put an effect on them. I could come down to the timeline, hit T and change the opacity of those. And then back in the main comp, you can see what that's done. That was really quick and easy. But if I wanna have more control over it and be able to easily go back in the future and tweak the opacity and change these layers without having to do this whole thing every time, let me show you a trick. I'm gonna undo to get the opacities back to 100% and I'm gonna deselect everything. Okay, so I'm gonna make my selection. I'm gonna control click, select every second layer. And then I'm going to click right on here on more, which is gonna bring up that same menu of extra tools. And I'm going to set a label. And what this is gonna do is just apply a color label to all of the layers that are selected. What's great about this is that now at any point I can go into skew, control click on, let's say one of the red layers and say select similar. And it will select every layer that has the same color. And then I can push that to After Effects and I have an instant selection. So let's undo this. Let me just go ahead and apply the same color to all of these. I'm gonna select all of them, control click, select every, but I'm gonna change the index to three. So now it's selecting every third layer. I'm then going to click on more and set a different color for those layers. Then I can select again, control click, select every, set the index to three again, but this time I'm gonna use the shift property and it's gonna shift the selection 
up one layer. So now you can see that it's still selecting every third layer, but it's kind of started from a different place. And so this way I'm getting the same pattern of selecting the layers, but I'm starting from a different place, which means that I can change that color. And now just like that, I have a very easy way of selecting groups of layers that are spaced three layers apart. So if I wanted the opacity to be different on say just the blue layers, I could control click one of them, select similar, push that selection to AE, and then come down here to my timeline and adjust the opacity to say 75% for all the blue layers. Now I'll do the same thing for the red layers. I'm gonna control click, select similar, push to AE, come down here to my timeline, and then I'll set the opacity of the red layers to let's say 50%. And if I change my mind down the road, it's as simple as control clicking and selecting similar. And if I had even more colors, I could do this. I could control click in here and say, select using label color. And that way, if I wanted to select say the red and the yellow, but not the blue, I can actually do that. And now I have a selection of red and yellow. This is really, really, really powerful. And I think really useful. It's kind of, to me, it's almost like a hidden feature because in the marketing, this isn't the thing that everyone was kind of, you know, going googly eyed over. But I actually think that this is probably the thing that will save the most time. So here's the final result. And if I wasn't talking through this, I actually could have done this probably in about 15 seconds. That's how much time this tool can save. And as many things as I went over, there's actually even more features buried in SKU that I didn't have time to go over. So what I would recommend is if you are a professional motion designer or you hope to be one day, these are the kinds of tools that it's really worth investing in and investing in the time to learn them. So check out SKU. The link is in the description. And please leave a comment if you think SKU is useful, if there's other use cases that you think of when you see this. And if you want even more design and animation tips and training, please subscribe to our channel so you can get notified when we upload new videos. And head to schoolmotion.com. Check out our free 10-day course, The Path to MoGraph. If you're interested in motion design, it's a really great way to dip your toes into the water and learn a little bit about it for free. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.